In this video, I'm going to break down the four things that everyone who gets visible abs does just like I did when I went from being about 30% body fat to a well-defined six pack that I've been able to keep year round for eight years now. And we start right now arguably one of the most important parts of seeing a well-defined six pack and that's having plenty of patience. The problem is you can see fat loss from all over your body and belly fat is usually the last to go because it's protecting vital organs. I want you to think of this paper towel roll as your body fat. We've got before and then after week one, we're gonna take that off, you've lost some body fat. Now you look from start to week one, it looks exactly the same. But now what happens if we just keep going and we keep going, you keep losing body fat, week after week it feels like nothing's happening. Now you look back and you go, oh, there's change happening. This core right here, that's what you need to get to in order to see your abs. The thing you have to understand is the more you try to rush this process, the less likely you are to reach your goal. What happens when you start a fat loss phase is eventually your body's gonna go through something called adaptive thermogenesis. And basically what happens is as you diet, those levels of calories you're eating are gonna become your new maintenance calories. So if you get ultra aggressive right away to try to lose weight fast, sure, you probably see faster fat loss up front, which is exciting, but then what inevitably happens is you end up getting stuck and because you have no room to make adjustments now you can't see further progress and you just get frustrated not only that but if you lose weight too fast you're going to sacrifice muscle and your abs are a muscle i'll touch more of that later in this video so you want to eat as many calories as you can while seeing results not losing more than about one percent of your weight on average per week and i'm telling you when i went from the heaviest i ever was 210 pounds down to 178 pounds that was an 11 month process and i averaged losing two-thirds of a pound per week during that time nobody ever came to me and said, well, man, that progress is not very good. Sure is slow. It's not about how fast you get there. It's about being able to get there. And the reason I was able to get there and keep it off for eight years is because I was patient and I made a lifestyle out of it. The second thing pretty much everyone does who is able to get a visible six pack is they have accountability with their nutrition. Everyone who does this tracks. Are there examples of some people who have six packs who didn't track? Sure. But they're usually the exception to the rule. Thing is to get to low enough levels of body fat to see your abs, you need to be pretty diligent with things and when you're tracking this way you're accountable to how much you're eating once you've been tracking and you have a good idea of what your maintenance calories are now you want to make about a 20 percent reduction from those maintenance calories so say for instance you're eating 2500 calories for your maintenance then you would eat around 2000 calories and then as you hit plateaus a plateau being you're not seeing progress not in just weight but also pictures measurements no changes in how your clothes are fitting once you see that for two to three weeks now you can reduce your calories by another 10 percent or so and start seeing progress again. You also want to make sure you're eating plenty of protein. Protein is far and away the most helpful macronutrient there is. It has an extremely high thermic effect of food of about 20 to 30 percent, meaning 20 to 30 percent of your calories just get burned up by the body processing it. That's significantly more than both carbs or fat. Carbs is only about five to eight percent and fat only about two to three percent. Not only that, but protein is what builds muscle. Muscle is metabolically demanding. The more muscle you have, the higher your resting metabolic rate is. And it's also very filling, so it's going to keep you from being overly hungry during your dieting phase and going back to the patience thing you want to make sure you're taking diet breaks along the way i was definitely including these during my fat loss phase this is where you eat back around maintenance or so for a week maybe even two or even longer now you get some improvements to your metabolic rate and your hormones so that you can keep the process working better for longer without making so many adjustments to your calories too the third consideration to make here is the exercise side of things and i'm telling you everyone who has a well-defined six-pack does pretty much the opposite of what most people do and that's focus their attention on a good strength training plan and not overdoing cardio trying to see abs. Think about it this way. When have you ever seen anybody with a very well-defined six pack who didn't also have a good base of total muscle? This is for good reason. I already mentioned more muscle means faster metabolism. Strength training is also incredibly beneficial as not only do you burn calories from the exercise, you burn additional calories at rest recovering from that exercise for up to two days. Whereas with cardio, once your heart rate comes back to normal, you immediately stop burning more calories. There's just nothing that more positively changes your body composition than strength training and building muscle. But the mistake a lot of people make with their training is sure you train abs, but you do it in a way that does not build your actual six pack muscles. Remember your core has a lot of muscles, but the rectus abdominis is the six pack muscles that you're looking to display. And their main function is bringing your chest 
down towards your pelvis. So these crunching variations, especially movements that you can overload weight on, is how you want to train that to build the muscles so you can display your six pack better. So you want to treat your abdominal muscles like any other muscles. That doesn't mean training them every single day. That doesn't mean going super high rep. You can do all the planks and side planks you want in the world. That's not going to build your six pack. I'm not saying that those don't have value. They're certainly great for things like endurance, stamina, and core stability and things like that, but they're not training the function of your rectus abdominis. So I recommend training your abs twice per week, focusing between about eight to 15 reps to stay in that hypertrophy range, and especially movements where you can overload them with weight. So things like weighted crunches, cable crunches, decline crunches, especially with weight as you get stronger, and hanging leg raises, just to name a few. Now all that said, I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing cardio. Cardio is certainly something you're probably gonna do some of to help. It just shouldn't be your primary focus. Much like when you reduce calories, your body adapts. As you increase cardio, your body adapts to that as well. And you end up burning less calories doing the same amount of activity over time. So you just have to keep doing more and more. So what I prefer to do is use walking for most of my cardio. I don't feel like your body adapts quite as much as calories get lower and you're doing a lot of training. Energy is gonna be at a premium. So so if you're blasting yourself with intense cardio on top of it, you can really run your body into the ground. And if you're not recovering properly, you're not gonna be able to see results. So going for frequent walks, maybe around a half hour to start, and you can increase that over time, can be a great help. The fourth thing everyone does who gets a six pack is they make this lifestyle a priority. You're not gonna get an extreme result like having a well-defined six pack by just nonchalantly doing things when it's convenient. It's gonna have to be something you're gonna make a non-negotiable and a big part of your life. It's too difficult of a goal to reach without being all in. Now, all in doesn't mean all or nothing. If you fall into the all or nothing mentality, I guarantee you, you're never gonna get there. And hey, you might not even reach your six pack goal in this fat loss attempt, and that's okay. Your body is a machine at homeostasis. It wants to stay the same. So at a certain point, your body's gonna fight you, but that doesn't mean, oh, screw it, it's just not for me. And now you go out and you just bend your face off and gain weight rapidly. No, instead, now reverse diet, bring your calories back up gradually, put yourself back into a better position metabolically so down the road you can make the next fat loss attempt from a close position to where you are now and then you can reach your goal but hey you don't even necessarily have to have an extremely low level of body fat if you want to see how to see six pack abs even at a higher percentage like 20 percent of body fat then make sure you check out this top video up here and i'll walk you through how to do that otherwise i think you like this bottom video instead and i'll see you in one of those other videos